Somewhat off the beaten track in the north of Essex was once found the independent line known as the Colne Valley in Halstead. It provided the shortest route between Colchester and Cambridge by its connections with the Great Eastern, and served exclusively the flourishing market town of Halstead, which in 1911 had over 7,000 inhabitants. A railway in the Colne Valley was first proposed in 1846, when the Colchester, Stour Valley, Sudbury, and Halstead Railway Company was incorporated to build a line from Marks Tay on the Eastern Counties Railway to Sudbury, with a branch to Halstead and a line from Colchester to Hythe. A later extension to Bury St. Edmunds and Clare was also approved. However, a shortage of funds resulted in only the Stour Valley Railway to Sudbury and the line to Hythe being constructed. In 1856, the Colne Valley and Halstead Railway Company was formed by local people to build a branch line from Chapel and Wakes Colne Railway Station to Halstead. It was authorized on the 30th of June 1856 and opened on the 16th of April 1860 between Chapel, north of Marks Tay, and Halstead, a distance of six miles. A 13-mile extension was authorized on the 13th of August 1859 and opened in stages between Halstead and Haverhill, physical connection with the Great Eastern being provided in 1865, and although close relations are maintained with the Great Eastern, the CVHR remained completely independent until it became part of the LNER in the 1923 grouping. The CVHR station was renamed Haverhill South and was closed to passengers in 1924, but remained open for goods until 1965 along with the rest of the route, when the entire section was closed. When the Haverhill Loop was first opened and for some time after, the Great Eastern worked goods trains but not passenger over the Cone Valley. The passenger service in 1865 consisted of four through trains each way on weekdays and two on Sundays. To operate the Colne Valley traffic properly, and obviate hiring from the Great Eastern when their engines were laid off and sent to Stratford for heavy repairs, Mr. Fenn, the local superintendent, ordered in 1876 from Nielsen and Company of Glasgow a small 042 side tank engine with inside cylinders, with the engine being delivered in early 1877. The coupled wheels had inside bearings, but the deep valances incorporated outside bearings for the trailing wheels. There was a striking resemblance and similarity in dimensions to S.W. Johnson's 15 Class T7042 tanks built by the Great Eastern from 1871 to 75, the last of which were withdrawn in 1894. Indeed, the engine was likely constructed from the same plans, but whilst the Johnson engine was cabless, number one was amended before construction began so as to include one, albeit to a rather peculiar design. The Westinghouse braking system was fitted, and after the arrival of the F9242s, the engine was kept as the spare for the line. As delivered, the locomotive was painted dark green, but at the same time the first of the F9s arrived was repainted into a crimson color with black bands of vermilion lining, the F9s originally also being painted in this scheme. In 1894, the engine was turned out in the livery as seen here and thereafter, all Colne Valley locos were painted line black, but with slight variations from each other. The F9s generally carried the initials CV on the tanks, with the later 062 tank purchased, classified N18 by the LNR, carrying the full company acronym. Number 1 herself only ever carried a set of number plates on the side of the tanks. The Colne Valley engines were generally overhauled at the Great Eastern Stratford Works, number 1 being repaired there in 1878, 82, and 85. In 1888, she was sent to Hawthorne Leslie and Company, who gave the engine two supplementary water tanks over the front splashers and modified the cab. Further repairs were done at Stratford in 1890 and 94, a new boiler and stovepipe chimney being fitted on the latter occasion. She had another overhaul there in 1900, and again in 1903, when another new boiler was fitted. It would also seem a number of Great Eastern fittings were applied to the engine by the time of the 1903 reboilering a locomotive acquiring fluted coupling rods, Holman-style Ramsbottom safety valves, flak valves, vacuum pipes, and other odds and ends. Whilst number one became part of LNER stock, she did not survive to receive an LNER number or classification, nor was there ever an engine diagram issued for her. The locomotive was dumped at Stratford in the early part of the year, and cut up there in August 1923. She managed to outlive the rest of the Johnson T7s by 27 years. Oddities are one of the unique attractions of railway history, and the Colne Valley certainly had a number of them. Number one is just one such example, and I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet of history on quite a unique locomotive. <laughs>